Before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsor, CompHealth. If you are a physician looking for a new job or considering locum tenens for the first time, make sure to check out CompHealth. I've worked locums with CompHealth and I appreciate the personalized experience I have with my recruiter who is dedicated to my specialty and knows my needs and goals. CompHealth also offers full-time permanent jobs if you are looking for a longer-term switch. For more information, check out comphealth.com. Welcome to The Art of Medicine, a program that explores the arts, business, and clinical aspects of the practice of medicine. I'm Dr. Andrew Wilner, and my guest today is Dr. John Jerica. Welcome, John. Hello, Dr. Wilner. It's so good to be here. John, I want to welcome you back. You are actually on episode number seven, and we are in the episode 50s, which at that time seemed kind of unimaginable. So uh, I appreciate you having enough confidence to put yourself out there in a brand new podcast. And I've also had the privilege of being on your podcast about non-clinical careers, which I'm really impressed with. I think you, you've you passed episode 200, is that right? Yeah, I'm at like 235 right now. Two th and, and it's a weekly podcast, right? Right. Yeah, mine's Comes around real weeks, quick. <laughs> which is about all I can keep up with. So I'm very impressed at someone who can do, you know, a weekly podcast, you know, we talk about the grind of being a doctor and showing up every day, but somehow you've ground out 230 episodes every week, haven't missed one, right? That's right. That's right. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing now. Okay, just a little background. I'm a family physician, and I also worked, uh, worked my way up into chief medical officer of a hospital, which I did until about seven years ago, quit that, opened an urgent care center. Now I'm phasing out of that. And then during the last few years, I just started getting into this whole idea of non-clinical and non-traditional careers. And the idea of a podcast intrigued me, like I think it did you as well. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll combine that interest. I'll do the podcast and I'll learn about non-clinical careers by inviting people on and interviewing people that have non-clinical or non-traditional careers like you. You do clinical, but to me, locums is kind of one of those interesting, different types of practices. And so I kept up with that and I've, I've done some other things related to that, but that's basically what I've been up to for the last few years. Well, I think I discovered you, John, when about four years ago, I started uh, jogging <laughs> and I was really desperate for some distraction and I started listening to podcasts and I found John Jerica and it's like, wow. This guy is really interesting and had the most fascinating guests. And this whole idea of non-clinical careers for physicians, I think it's really exploded, right? You know, it was 2016, and I did that research for my book, that more than 50% of physicians became employees mm -hmm. for the first time. You know, and I think that's the seismic shift. When doctors were entrepreneurs, they owned their own practices. There was a lot of regulation, but it wasn't overwhelming. EMRs weren't required. You know, doctors kind of were like any other business person. But when doctors became employees, uh, and more and more, that's the trend because of many, many changes in the way the world works, uh, things changed a lot for physicians who has had an, an employer mindset, <laughs> but an employee, right. uh, paycheck. And I think a lot of the dissatisfaction, you know, you can put up a lot when it's your own business, right? Absolutely. You, know, you don't mind staying there till midnight when it's yours. But when, when the boss says, Hey, you got to stay late to sign these charts or, you know, come up with this plan, it feels different. And I think that's where non-clinical careers have really uh, taken off. And you've, 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 part, you've been part of the foundation of that, I think, in terms of the non-clinical career sphere. So what do you offer for physicians who are considering non-clinical careers either instead of or in addition to you know, their practices? 
Okay, of course, we started with the podcast. There's a lot of information there and a lot of inspiration, really, because of just talking to people. Mostly I do interviews. I've done about 150 interviews. They're not all interviews, but those interviewees talk about why they switched over, what they're doing. And then after learning about different things and the fact that actually I held three or four of my own non-clinical jobs during those years, I opened, a, I, I just produced courses, basically. It's called the non-clinical career academy and i just post courses there about how to transition why to transition different types of jobs you can look for um and non-traditional careers like locums and telemedicine and things like that and um other than that i've got my website which where everything is sitting at nonclinicalphysicians.com but the thing that I'm most excited about at this moment is something new called New Script, which we could probably spend a few minutes talking about in a minute. But that is more of a community, kind of a Facebook lookalike that brings together others besides physicians uh, into that community to talk about non traditional career and how to thrive, how to get over burnout and if, you know, issues like that. Well, I confess that I have the new script app on my phone because I don't want to miss anything that uh, you do. So I, oh, really? I, I kind of track you just, just to see what, what interesting things is John doing. And new script, as you say, it's, it's like a Facebook, but it's private. You have to have the app and uh, one, you have to sign up. And so nobody control it. You're either a member or you're not, right? Yes, yes. So it, it kind of looks like a Facebook. There's a couple of advantages over Facebook. It is private. It doesn't really have a lot of ads. We do a little bit of marketing of our own and our mentors products. Per, I, it's not heavy duty at all, but that's it. No ads. And yet at the same time, it's confidential. And it has the non-physicians in there as well, which helps because, you know, we work with non-physicians. We work with nurses and APNs and PAs and well, not directly with dentists that often, but other people like that. And they actually are going through the same burnout that we are. So we want to get this community. And by the way, this is a partnership with Tom Davis, which some of your listeners may know who that is. But we want to get everybody in the community that's affected by this corporatization of medicine, which you alluded to, the employment of physicians and others, uh, so that we could all share experiences and support one another and provide mentorship and coaching to one another informally. So if I didn't already have the app, how would I get it? So it's pretty easy. Actually, if you go into any phone app store, well, at least on an iPhone, I know for sure, you just look up new script, N-E-W-S-C-R-I-P-T. It's kind of indicate you're going to write a new script for your life and for your career, but you can just look it up there. Otherwise, you can go to newscript.app. And it'll take you to a page that describes it. And, and I should mention there is a fee for it now. When, first, when we first opened, it was free. And uh, we had a very tiny, less than $5 fee by at least a few cents per month. And it's a membership. And so that becomes automated. And uh, yeah, then you can access it day and night whenever you want. I mean, Tom and I both post all the time. Many of our members do as well, although not as much as we'd like. And we have coaches and mentors like you who come in there who can add their expertise. And it, it, it's pretty cool because it's not just written content. Uh, I have a live stream I do every week. It's live. People can ask, ask questions while I'm online. Then I record it. And so it stays. So it gets added to the content for anyone that goes in there. there you can do the same thing as a member. You can upload video. You can do a live stream. You can write things. You can put photos of you know some quote or something. So it's it's quite a bit more than than just a typical way that people use Facebook. And in addition, we're adding interest groups. So instead of being like one feed, like a Facebook group, we'll actually have multiple feeds for different topical areas, which I can explain more if if you need me to. But uh, that way, you know, it's not just one massive group of, you know, all these people coming in and, and writing in the same location. Now, you've spoken to a lot of physicians who either are considering or actually have completed the, uh, uh, the leap, let's say, to a non-clinical career. Uh, where do they land? What's the most common kind of non-clinical career destination that people end up in? 
But what I found is the ones that are most common are most common for a reason. So a big one is somewhere in a hospital environment as a medical director or chief medical officer or VPMA or something, just because people are there and there's a need. The other big one is because it's easy. So a lot of people are looking, they want to get away from the hospital and out of their clinic. And so utilization management hires a lot of physicians and a medical science liaison, which is kind of an entry level in pharma is also one open to pretty much any physician. There is no real prerequisite for an MSL except, you know, certain characteristics and a willingness to learn. So those are the big three that I hear about all the time and talk about most often. Yeah, I've also been interested in this space because uh, I've had a non-clinical career as a writer uh, mm -hmm. since I was a teenager and it evolved into a medical writer. I mean, I wrote fiction and poetry, but then I discovered that medical writing that someone would actually pay you. And uh, so it was kind of validating. And so I, as a journalist, I could write an article. It would actually get published, unlike uh, a lot of my fiction. And then somebody would actually pay for it. So uh, there was a kind of a nice circle there that was uh, self-feeding. Uh, uh, and uh, so I'm very sympathetic to people, you know, trying to do non-clinical careers because it's difficult. And it's uh, also very difficult although not impossible, I think, to match your physician's salary. Um, you know, physicians work really, really hard and a lot of hours and are at a fairly high compensation level, even though I'll admit it doesn't always feel that way. Uh, but compared to a lot of other professions, um, it's, uh, it's hard to match, you know, although, you know, if you become a real estate magnate, you know, that's, that's, you know, or a venture <laughs> yeah. capitalist, then you're in a whole other category, but medical writer, you know, uh, these things are tough, tough to earn a living. Well, I would say this and medical writing is actually the other one of the big four, the three I mentioned, plus medical writing are the most common by, you know, uh, by far. Um, what I like to remind physicians about is when we think about earning, we, number one, we have to make sure we're comparing apples to apples. Okay, you do a non-clinical, you have essentially zero liability. You'll never end up in court for all those non-clinical jobs, unless it's extremely rare. Um, and you're working less hours. Intellectually, it could be difficult to, to write for 40 hours a week, but I don't think the brain power and the intensity, the risk and the concern over someone dying or not dying is anywhere near what would be a physician. So, I mean, really we burn out sometimes, even if we only work 40 or 50 hours, because it's an intense job. And uh, I made more money, infected more patients, improved the quality in my community as chief medical officer, you know, m than I did as a clinician. And so if you get a good job in pharma, if you get a medical director and above jobs in, uh, you know, health insurance or these other fields, uh, a lot will equal or surpass their salary, unless they're a super highly paid, you know, proceduralist or, you know, specialty surgeon or something. So it's there. You have to take a little hit for maybe a year or so in some of them, but most of them you can you can overcome that. John, I think it's great that uh, you're sharing all these uh, options on uh, NewScript and on your other uh, on your website and during the podcast. Maybe someday you'll have me back. And yes. <laughs> uh, before we wind up, anything else you would uh, like to add? Uh, no, I just I appreciate you for having me here. I encourage people to check out NewScript if if they're in the situation where they're starting to feel like. I need to do something else, something non-clinical or at least non-traditional. And I really don't know where to look. That's actually the biggest barrier. Once you get past that and into something, then you, you know where to go from there. So, but I would also encourage you and uh, remind you that there are people like myself and Andrew and thousands of other physicians that are out here trying to help our colleagues. So, you know, keep the faith move forward. Uh, don't get re resigned, you know, that you're not going to find something. And, you know, you never know if you, if you look for it, you might find something even better in clinical medicine, but if that doesn't work out, then you always have the non-clinical route to go. Dr. John Jerica, thank you very much for being on the art of medicine. My pleasure. Before we close, I'd like to give another thanks to our sponsor comp health. 
At Comp Health, you can talk with a recruiter who knows your specialty and will actually get to know you and your goals. Consider starting your personalized job search at comphealth.com. That's comphealth.com. This program is hosted, edited, and produced by Andrew Wilner, MD, FACP, FAAN. Guests receive no financial compensation for their appearance on the art of medicine. Andrew Wilner, MD, is Associate Professor of Neurology at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center, Memphis, Tennessee. Views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on this program belong solely to Dr. Wilner and his guests and not necessarily to their employers, organizations, or other group or individual. While this program intends to be informative, it is meant for entertainment purposes only. The art of medicine does not offer professional financial, legal, or medical advice. Dr. Wilner and his guests assume no responsibility or liability for any damages, financial or otherwise, that arise in connection with consuming this program's content. Thanks for watching. For more episodes of The Art of Medicine, please subscribe www.andrewwilner.com.